So it's, it's 11 o'clock, and uh, understanding that this is the, the last session of Open Aperio, and uh, people have probably been slightly sessioned out, it's always, it's always a good time to be at the very end. So, but I, I do think it's probably good to start on time so that we can end on time and get, and get people where they need to be. And these 45-minute sessions tend to go fairly quickly. So, so let's, uh, let's, let's dive in here. This is going to be an, an opportunity to share some thoughts and some, uh, some orientation to a big cache of market data about Sakai that the community purchased uh, with some support from Longsight a little bit earlier this year. So we had, a, uh, we had a small investment in market data last year, and then moving into this spring, we expanded our, our investments. So the idea was to have a, a fair bit of data that we could use to help us understand how Sakai stacked up against competitors. A lot of times we have a certain view of Sakai from, from where we all sit. I was really taken by what Dr. Chuck had to say the other day. Because the customers, that being us and others, are so deeply involved in all of the, the sausage making, we've got a, a very good sense of what things are going well and maybe what things are not going so well. And one of the advantages of market data is that there's this ability to get an outsider's view of, of what the product actually looks like and what people actually think of it. So at least outside of our heads, if not outside of the community. So, so the, the plan this morning is to give you guys a sense of what's out there because we have licensed a, a lot of this data and can put it in your hands. So I want to give you a sense of what's out there, give you a sense of what questions you can ask of it, and uh, allow you to take it from there. So we, we, will, we will scratch the surface of this data, but we won't get all the way in. So definitely as you have questions about what kinds, of, uh, what kinds of insights these data can offer. Write those down, hang on to those. Glad to connect with you either during this session or later. So let me orient you a little bit to what's out there, what, what we have licensed and what we have available. Um, and then we'll, we'll dive into some of the visualizations. So I'm curious though, how would you guys describe Sakai? So would you, would you consider Sakai, how many of you would consider Sakai to be a market leader? No one has raised, yeah. So the, the data actually would disagree. So in some ways, this is gonna be an interesting reinvention of our views on things. Um, how, many, how many of you would consider Sakai to have a better customer experience than competitors? Some, but only a few. The data would support those of you who think that. So in, in some ways, this is a, it's, it's a very interesting aha moment because what we have here belies what we like to think from our insider's view. So why do we need market data? So market data does, does a couple of things. And you know, this is, uh, none of us, I think, are marketing experts here. I mean, I, I'm, I come from a, an academic technology background like you guys. So this is in, in some ways new to me as well. But, uh, you know, if you think about it from a service assessment perspective, which is a little bit more uh, common, a little, little bit more in our collective wheelhouses, how well are we doing in terms of providing the service? Uh, how well are we think? How well does the service we provide stack up against similar services at peer institutions or similar services provided by other vendors? This is the kind of thing that market data provides for us, and so. What we really want to do is to be able to understand our competitors better. And from my perspective, we want to be able to think about where we want to make investments, where it would be intelligent for us to make investments in Sakai, uh, where we can make a difference, where we can stake out positions of, uh, of leadership compared to, compared to Canvas and, and some of the others in the space. So market data helps us understand this. There's a, uh, there's a vein of market data which is understanding the consumer. And this, is a li this particular data set is a little bit less about that, a little bit more about understanding the competitor. We'll dive into why that is in a few minutes. So I wanted to digress just a little tiny bit and talk about how this market data gets collected, because this is a, a, this is a specific kind of methodology. So this, this particular market data set relies on software reviews. So it's, uh, it's produced by a company called Infotech. They're in Canada. Uh, their softwarereviews.com site is a competitor to Gartner's peer reviews. So individuals who use the software 
are invited to review it. And that's the data set that gets analyzed and compared. So, so this is a comparison of uh, knowledgeable Sakai users, maybe advocates, maybe not, but knowledgeable people about the platform and people who are knowledgeable about other LMS platforms. And that's the data set that is used to compare one LMS to another. So at this point, there are close to 900 reviews uh, as of April of this year. It's probably a little bit more now. Uh, about 70 some odd of those are Sakai reviews. About 100 each of those are uh, Canvas and Moodle, and a little bit fewer than 100 for Desire to Learn. So, so roughly of those 900 reviews, about 100 are for each of the four major players in the marketplace, in the LMS marketplace, and then the rest are much smaller players. So this, uh, this company, Infotech, gets reviewers in a couple of different ways. So one is that we invite reviewers to participate. Some of you may have seen emails from Wilma asking you to review Sakai. There are definitely other ways as well. They, they perform direct outreach via social channels, and they, they use others of their contacts they also use uh, some algorithms in LinkedIn to discard reviews from reviewers who are not expert reviewers. So it's very much this uh, expert versus expert set of reviews in the, in the data set. So let's talk about what we have. And then we'll, we'll pause for a second to take stock before we dive in a little bit more deeply. So, this market data comes in two flavors, and these two quadrant charts describe the two different flavors that we have available to us. So the first flavor is about vendor capability and product features. So that's the quadrant chart on the left. On the right is more of a customer experience flavor. So that's how customers feel about the, the LMS. And so again, these are, you know, when, when we think about the people who are, who are providing the data, so it's knowledgeable, technologists, knowledgeable faculty, unlikely to be knowledgeable students, but possible. So what is the experience for, for those reviewers? And that's what's, that's what's represented in, in this diamond here. So these two flavors shake out into a couple of different reports. And the reason why this actually matters is because uh, one of the things that I want to do is to make these reports available to you guys. We have licensed the ability to publish these reports. So at a minimum, they all ought to be put in the hands of community members. So knowing what we have is going to be helpful for you as you think about how to dive into this and use it for your purposes. So there are a couple of different reports. So there's, there is a category report, which focuses on uh, product and vendor information. There is an emotional footprint report that focuses on customer experience. Those are the two big reports. And they're, they're published at different points in the year. So the, the product and vendor report is published in the fall. The customer experience report is published in the spring. So there's also a Sakai product scorecard, which is the deepest of deep dives into all of the measures related to Sakai. And finally, there are head-to-head -head reports, which are top-level measures that compare Sakai to one of the other LMSs in the marketplace. So we've, we've licensed the ability to get five of those head-to-head -head reports. So I've, I've asked for two at this point. I have the Sakai versus Moodle report and the Sakai versus Canvas report, which we'll take a look at a little bit later on. So it's, it's a lot of the same data presented in different kinds of ways. So I've got a couple of high-level takeaways that I want to share. But before I get there, let me, let me pause on uh, the methodology and the delivery, uh, the, the stuff that we license. So what questions, if any, do you guys have about that aspect of this before we dive into insights? All right. Everyone's here for the meat. Let's, uh, let's, let's get to it then. So I wanted to offer a couple of very, very high-level takeaways uh, about the data set from, from my perspective. I mean, many of you have seen me in other presentations, and I've talked a lot about the survey data that I worked with over 10 years. So this is, this is a different kind of data set, but in some ways I read the visualizations the same way. I'm looking for where there are differences in areas that matter, where things are actually the same, even though maybe Infotech has has called out a position of leadership. In some cases, I disagree that, uh, you know, that there's a position of leadership or that there isn't. Uh, there are some cases where uh, you know, I think it's a good thing 
that there is no difference that's, that's meaningful between Sakai and some of the other vendors. So we'll, we'll take a look at those. Um, but the overall takeaways from my perspective are these. So the first one, Sakai is an acknowledged market leader according to this independent analysis. A lot of times we like to think of Sakai as the scrappy little LMS that can, the, uh, the, the, tr the, the boulder that we're pushing up the hill or the, uh, the little locomotive that could. Uh, but I think that this data does not support that interpretation. And in some ways, we do ourselves a disservice at our institutions positioning Sakai that way. So I think that you have license now to talk about Sakai as a market leader. We have the data to indicate that. And there's actually other, you know, I've talked in other presentations about survey data that indicates the same thing. So we have multiple sources of national analysis offering us the insight that Sakai really is a market leader. We should consider ourselves that way. We should talk about ourselves that way, both on campus and off. So that's takeaway number one. Takeaway number two is this. So the results at the next level of detail show real leadership in product and customer experience especially, a little bit less in vendor relations. Uh, you know, so those are areas of uh, you know, how your vendor helps you and uh, ease of implementation. That's a weird category for Sakai because as much as I'm speaking uh, with a community hat and a long side hat simultaneously, there are a lot of institutions that uh, run their own Sakai because they can and because we, we support that and because we honor that. So the vendor questions are a little bit, the data is a little bit dirtier in those, uh, in those areas than in some of the others. But for sure, we should be trumpeting product leadership and we should be trumpeting customer experience leadership because that's what this data set suggests that we have. So third overall takeaway is that as we dive in and get deeper, there are definitely many areas of leadership. And there are many other areas where there really is no difference between Sakai and some of the other LMSs. And I think that, in general, this is a very positive story. And we can, we can take a look at places where uh, we re you know, so the story of, of uh, no significant difference in our case is, I think, a story of not actually being behind in areas that maybe we thought we were. So, uh, you know, and that's, put that way, it doesn't seem like the greatest argument. But on the other hand, if what you're hearing on your campus is Canvas does this and Canvas does that, the counter argument from this data set is, well, according to this independent market analysis, uh, in fact, reviewers of these software packages consider them to be about the same. So let's, let's make our determinations not based upon what we think is shinier or more exciting, but instead what's going to meet our needs better. It allows you to position the argument a little bit more differently, a little bit differently. So let's take a bit of a deeper dive, and I'm going to flip from these uh, Google Slides to, to some of the PDFs that have come to us as part of this subscription. So we'll go through a few. Uh, again, I'll be scratching the surface, so I'm going to talk about a couple of different aspects of each one. Uh, if you want to stop or pour over something, definitely let me know. This is going to be a combination of orientation to what these visualizations say and some insights that I take away from what these visualizations offer. So let's see, let me, let me do that switch. All right. So we're going to start with the data quadrant report. This is the, the product and vendor report. So as you can see, eight vendors evaluated, 899 reviews. This is as of uh, early April. So here is the data quadrant that we saw before. This is, this is the same quadrant, just positioned in the report instead of pulled out. Um, and again, you can see the, uh, the LMSs that are on the, in the upper right-hand corner are the ones that, that are positioned as leaders. So vendor experience is along the x-axis. Product features and, uh, and satisfaction is along the y-axis. So those LMSs that score best in terms of product features and satisfaction and vendor experience are the ones that end up in that leadership quadrant on the upper right hand side. So this is, this is definitely something that uh, you can, you know, this, this is something to, to talk about on your campuses and it's a way to encapsulate the argument. Um, my big takeaway from this is that, you know, again, we should evaluate the LMSs on the merits. We, sh we shouldn't walk into 
our, uh, our institutional LMS reviews saying, well, Canvas is better, and what do we do about that? So moving on in the, in the realm of product and vendor. So this is, this is the category overview visualization. This is at the top of the report. And it tries to encapsulate a bunch of the other smaller, smaller data points. So it's, uh, it's sorted by the composite score category, which is, um, which is this one right here. So as I, yeah. <laughs> I'm not the only one who's, who's, having, who's having these issues. So as I, as I look at these, I see two tiers, or, or, or more than two tiers, actually. So I see Sakai with a composite score of 8.7, and that's including all of the product and vendor categories. Uh, I see the next tier, where the next three are basically about the same, 8.2, 7.9. I, I question whether there's really any actual practical difference between Canvas that's got a score of 8.2 and Moodle that's got a score of 7.9. So, so the, but this, this category overview is, is sorted by this. So next, we have the net emotional footprint, which is the, the sum total of that customer experience. So here we can see that uh, Sakai has a plus 80, and then there's this, this next tier. Then we have the net footprint, em emotional, the, the net emotional footprint distribution. So seeing the, uh, the distribution of positive and negative comments. My, my big takeaway from this is as we look at these, Sakai has fewer negative reviewers than the others. So uh, in a lot of ways, there is the same number of positive reviewers for Sakai, Canvas, and Moodle. So is there really a difference between 83% positive, 80% positive, and 79% positive? Maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, but certainly as, as, as we look at the, these negatives, much less red for Sakai compared to others, and, um, and, less, and less yellow as well. And over here, as, as we look at the rest, we see the, the score for vendor capabilities, the score for product features, and the score for likeliness to recommend. Uh, one thing to note about this visualization is there are scores here that are represented as percentages. They are not percentages. I keep asking Infotech to remove the percentage symbol. They keep not doing it. Um, so these are means on a 100-point scale. So much better to view them that way. You know, there's not tons of difference in the way you would interpret those. But on the other hand, uh, if you sit here saying, 82% of what? That's not the question. It's 82 on a 100-point scale. So as we can see, further, further down the line, we can see some of the other LMS vendors that, uh, that were included in this study. I continue to be struck by how Blackboard remains at the bottom of the pile. So one of the things I think about from uh, you know, a, a Sakai expansion perspective as we look for schools that might adopt Sakai, the Blackboard schools are fairly ripe. Um, for, the, for the picking. I mean, so there's, there's work to be done there. This isn't easy. This isn't immediate. This doesn't happen overnight. Um, but in a lot of ways, I think that uh, going after the Blackboard schools would be a much uh, higher reward approach than you know, trying to pick off Moodle institutions, for example. You know, different people have made different arguments about where we ought to be uh, positioning ourselves in terms of the other vendors. All right, so let me, let me pause here for a second. So, what, what questions, if any, do you guys have about this particular product and vendor visualization? Either what we see here or the insights that we're getting. Yeah, Jason. Well, like the, um, the difference, you know, there's a lot of SLs installed in Google and stuff like that. So, with Sakai, you know, a lot of people still run their own. That's a really different experience than Canvas, which is almost 100% OCD. For, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, so that is a very good question. I, what I, I think that, the as I said, I think the vendor data for Sakai is a little dirty because our experiences are very different, and it's not clear really who's answering what. Um, you know, I think it would be interesting to do a, a dive with Infotech into uh, 
into this data to think about, you know, which of the reviews are truly using a vendor and which ones aren't. Um, as I look at this, I think about the vendor experience as the, the delivery of the software. You know, from a, a reviewer perspective, if the reviewer is an academic technologist or the reviewer is a faculty member, in some ways the, the vendor is the infrastructure group at the institution. You know, so what is, what is my experience in terms of having this delivered to me? But that's my interpretation of this, and I, th I think you're right to raise that question. Other questions? All right, so let's take a look at, at uh, two more in this report. So one is this vendor capability summary. So in some ways, this, uh, this gets into the question that, that you were asking. So apologies about the, the, the size of these. So this is, this is definitely a report that you want to you know, read closely. Um, but a couple of key things about what you see here. So obviously, the vendors are here on the, on the left. The overall capability score is right next to them. The, uh, the cells that are marked in green are the two leaders in each category. And across the top, we have uh, categories like uh, within vendor capability, business value created, breadth of features, quality of features, product strategy, and rate of improvement. These are all defined more extensively within the report. So as you, as you dive in, each one will have a little paragraph that helps explain what that means to, uh, to Infotech and the, and the folks who are doing the analysis on the back end. So a couple of things that I take away from this. I mean, as we look at this, uh, Sakai has a bunch of leadership spots on the board here. Uh, Moodle has a few more ostensibly, and Canvas only has a couple. So one big takeaway is that this data set does not support the notion of Canvas as a market leader across the board in terms of vendor capability. The other thing that I take away is that some of these have bigger gaps than others. Let's, let's take a look here. So business value created is a four-point gap, four and 100-point scale. Breadth of features is a five-point gap. So I would consider those to be uh, very likely actual gaps between Sakai and Moodle. I would consider uh, Sakai to actually be better at business value, uh, alignment of needs relative to cost, and breadth of features than Moodle, and certainly better than Canvas at a slightly lower level. On the other hand, for quality features, Moodle at, 80, at 84 and Sakai at 83, I would consider that difference to be noise. I think, I think those are the same. Uh, but on the other hand, Canvas is at 79, so I think there is a difference between, according to this data set, the quality features for Sakai and Moodle and the quality features for Canvas. Which others do I think are, are real differences? Usability and intuitiveness, that's a real difference. Sakai 86. Moodle 80, Canvas 75. Uh, the rest of these, honestly, I consider to be about the same. And in some ways, that's, that's a good story. Um, you know, certainly the same between Canvas and Moodle, and a little bit less for uh, uh, Sakai and Moodle, rather, rather, and certainly less for Canvas. So as we look at, for example, uh, availability and quality of training. So not one in which we lead. But on the other hand, the three scores are very much the same. So think about how much Canvas has invested in its training capability. And think about what, what we provide. And still, the reviewers consider them to be about the same quality of, of deliverable. And ease of implementation as well. So, so yes, Canvas has a higher ease of implementation. I mean, I consider there to be a real difference between 80 and 74. But on the other hand, uh, you know, Moodle has, been, has always been given kudos for its click, 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 ease of, of install. But on the other hand, that's not, this data set indicates that it's not that much easier in the minds of reviewers than, uh, than Sakai is to install. I mean, one, one takeaway that I have from this is that we probably ought not to get ourselves twisted around the axle regarding the, uh, the ease of packaging Sakai. That, that, that has been a conversation at past community meetings. I, w I would sooner see us focus on either extending some of these areas of leadership or potentially focusing on a, on a few of these that, that where we could actually put together a difference that's real. Yes. Of 
That's a, that's a good question. I, I can't say that I have a great answer. I have speculations, as I'm sure you guys do as well. Um, you know, I think this is across many campuses, and you tend to get uh, a slightly more balanced view across many campuses. On the other hand, I think that uh, each of you guys are hearing views of Canvas on your own campus, and a lot of times that's driven by uh, a smaller number of louder faculty voices. It's, it's a much more exception-driven uh, process and conversation on any one individual campus. Uh, you know, and that's not to say that the faculty members who are making this case are wrong. Uh, they may very well be right. Canvas may very well, uh, in their best judgment and in, in that of others, align better with the needs of, of uh, learning management on, on your campus. Or it could just be that they happen to like it better. Uh, you know, it, there could be any, any number of reasons. But, uh, you know, I, I would see that, that being the difference, you know, that uh, um, Canvas invests in its public perception in an extensive way. And there are certain things about, you know, that LMS that, that appeal to people depending upon what their particular needs are. And that's, what, that's what's driving the kind of Canvas is great conversation on our campuses. And, and I, I would put it, I would say one other thing too. I mean, so those of you who follow uh, Michael Feldstein in his, his analyses, uh, over the past couple of years we have seen uh, new Canvas implementations, but not new Sakai or Moodle in, in implementations. So the chatter on the Educause CIO list also factors into the way, this, the way these LMSs are being seen. So if the question from CIO A to his or her peers is, uh, you know, what are you guys doing in the LMS space? And there are Canvas adoptions, then that's what they talk about. You know, so that, that flavors the conversation a little bit. I'm trying to be as even-handed about this as, as I can, but also, uh, you know, try and call out what I think I'm seeing. So I'm, I'm curious though, what are, you guys must have thoughts about this question. What, what are your thoughts about why what you're hearing on your campus isn't necessarily the same as what you're seeing in this data set? Perhaps. And by that you mean, uh, you know, the, the aesthetic of the UI? Yeah, I mean, here, this is an opportunity to dive in a little bit deeper. I mean, here's the usability and intuitive, intuitiveness measure. And, uh, you know, th this is in the, in the report as well. For each of these measures, you can look and see the distribution for each LMS. Um, you know, and it's, it's interesting to see. So Sakai is top rated. 55% uh, of respondents chose uh, the, the fourth category on the four point scale. 34% chose the third category, and 11% and chose the second category. Um, so, you know, in, in, in some ways I think that this kind of more detailed view helps to address the Canvas is clunky argument. Uh, no, sorry, this, the, the Sakai is clunky argument, my bad. Um, because certainly as, as we look at this, uh, there's less satisfaction of Canvas's usability according to this analysis. I mean, you always get the, the you always get the person who says, uh, who, who uh, is the outlier and doesn't buy the broad analysis because it doesn't fit their perception of things. It's hard to deal with that, you know, but I do think that this gives you an argument to make that you couldn't make before. So let's, let's flip to, oh, hello. All right, there we go. All right. Let's, let's flip to the product feature summary. How are we doing for time here? All right. So we'll spend a few more minutes on, on product, then we'll talk about customer experience. <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. So, you know, or maybe, maybe it's worse now. I don't know. Um, so, but it's, uh, it's the final session. We'll, we'll all live. So this is, this is set up in the same kind of way. So we've got the vendors on the left. We have the overall feature satisfaction over here next to them. It's sorted by... Uh, the score and overall feature satisfaction. Then we have these various areas of leadership. So we've got analytics and reporting. This is kind of an interesting one. Uh, you know, several of us have brought up analytics in various sessions at, uh, at Open Aperio, and I put 
analytics on the, the agenda for the community meeting this afternoon because I think we have to organize ourselves to begin to develop an, an approach to this. But as we look at this, so yes, Canvas is a leader, but only at a score of 69 compared to 66 for Sakai and Moodle. So as much as Canvas markets its analytics capabilities, there really isn't a clear winner in this category. So I think the, the field is open for us to be really smart and stake out a position of leadership if we focus on it. Uh, what else? So where, where are there differences that actually mean something? Learning management is one where there actually is a difference, 89 to 80. Uh, student collaboration, 81 to 75. You know, these are places where we have told a story of Sakai being strong, and in fact, the data set bears that out. So other places where, where there isn't really a difference. Uh, let's see, content management. This speaks to the, the, the Lessons 2.0 conversation that we've, been, that we've just started. So I think we have an opportunity to widen this gap. Content creation, we're already a little bit better. Assessments and quizzes, a little tiny bit better than, uh, than Canvas and Moodle. Actually, about the same as Moodle, a little tiny bit better than Canvas. Several of us this morning were talking about how to make meaningful improvements to Samago, and I think that that's potentially a place where we might open up a gap as well. Sure, give it, give it one more go. So let me, let me pause for a second for questions about product and features before we move on to customer experience. Yeah. My, uh, my old boss at Brandeis used to walk around and his, uh, whenever anything happened, this is the CIO of Brandeis University in Massachusetts from you know, the 90s into the 2000s, he would say, technology sucks in this kind of deep voice of his. You know? And uh, I think you know, it, it gives and it takes away for sure. All right, that's, uh, that's fine. Let's, uh, let's just move on. So. Let's switch from the world of product to the world of customer experience. I'm going to show you a little bit less of this because there's one overarching visualization. So we can, we can focus on that. Where there were two in the product and vendor space, there's one in the customer experience space. So, same 899 reviews, same eight vendors evaluated. This is just a different analysis of different parts of the, the data collected through the instrument that each reviewer submits. So here's the, uh, the customer experience diamond that we saw before. And once again, here's, here's Sakai up at the top. So here we have fair cost to value on one axis and net emotional footprint. In other words, uh, how people feel about the LMS on the other axis. Um, so and we have what they call the champions up top here. So once again, I mean, I think the, the argument here is from a product and vendor perspective, from a customer experience perspective, we can talk about ourselves legitimately as, as a market leader. We have, we have the data to back that up. So you, sh you, shouldn't feel, uh, you shouldn't feel bad about doing that. So here's the emotional footprint summary. And uh, this is laid out a whole lot like what we saw in, in the other visualizations. We've got the vendors over here. It's sorted by the net emotional footprint score. That score actually appeared on the category overview as well. And here we have the net emotional footprint distribution. We talked about uh, the difference in the, in, in the negatives between uh, Sakai, Canvas, and Moodle. So I don't, I don't need to go there again. Uh, there's a cost fair to value measure that's here. That's kind of interesting. Um, one of the things that I think is really fascinating is how well Canvas scores in terms of cost relative to value. So Canvas is not that much better in terms of any of the specific measures of functionality or capability or vendor delivery. A few, but not, not that many. But yet, but yet, uh, from the perspective of cost to value, a whole lot better. I can't. I can't. Can any of you explain it? I mean, I would, I would point towards Sakai mar uh, to uh, Canvas's marketing budget. Uh, but. That's a speculation. Does anyone else want to speculate? Yeah, please speculate. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, Blackboard continues to be uh, the, the bottom of the pack for the, for the, the, major, the major contenders. Yeah. And Although, let me, let me push back just a little tiny bit, because uh, if people hate Blackboard and move to Canvas, um, it could be that that's producing a, an inflated view of, of uh, value to cost. Um, but uh, you know, it, it makes me wonder, you know, why wouldn't uh, Sakai is open source? We're not paying license fees. You know, why, wouldn't, uh, why wouldn't this be higher? You know, it can't just be about the, the Blackboard influence. Mm -hmm. Could be, could be, certainly. So let's take a, little, a look at what else is here. So there are a lot of measures within uh, emotional footprint. I'm not, not going to go into all of those because time. Uh, but you can see a few of them get surfaced here. So we see the strongest positive emotions. So for Sakai, 88, an 88 score for fair, an 88 score for integrity, an 88 score for trustworthy. Those are, those are nice words to be associated with us. The strongest negative emotions. Now, granted, these are smaller percentages than others. Uh, so our negatives are, are, have, a, have a smaller score than other vendors' negatives. But there are two things. They're stagnant and vendors' interest first. That's kind of interesting. Um, part of me wonders if that's the argument that uh, Virginia and some of the other institutions are making, that uh, we don't do enough in the community to allow those schools who wish to customize to do so easily. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, again, you know, what we, we, we see here what you get from surveys. Surveys tell us a lot about what's going on, but not necessarily a lot about why that's going on. That's the, that's the realm of qualitative research. So what we do with survey results like this is we observe what is and we interpret. That doesn't mean that our interpretations necess necessarily are right. That doesn't make mine better than yours. Um, so we, we just need to be aware that uh, we don't have the data to understand why this is. And we just need to remember that our interpretations, uh, we, we, ought to, we ought to take even our own interpretations with a grain of salt. So but before I switch to the head-to-head -head report, which gives a, a top-level view of a lot of these measures, uh, questions, comments, thoughts about emotional footprint, how customers feel about the LMS. I have to say, if we were in a smaller room, I think, it, I think this would be much more of a conversation. In some ways, these, these big rooms with these big lights are not conducive. Anyway, um, Josh, I'll throw in one. OK, go for it. So I want to make sure to surface some of the measures within emotional footprints. You can see that each of these has uh, detailed distribution scores. So some of these may address certain arguments on, on your campus. So I definitely encourage you to, to take a look at these. Uh, so they, they, they come in a couple different categories. They come in the category of service experience. They come in the category of conflict resolution, negotiation and contract. And also strategy and innovation. 
Uh, this one I happen to like a lot. Roadblock to innovation versus helps innovate. So Sakai gets the best score by quite a lot compared to, uh, so Sakai has a score of 83, Canvas 74, Brightspace 73, Moodle 68. So we talk about ourselves as an innovative platform. And once again, the, the, the data bear that out. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I remain with a lot of these measures taken with what Dr. Chuck said yesterday about what it means when the customers are integrated into every step of the process. We all have a very clear sense of what's not going very well. You know, so I think that it's, it's, we need to check ourselves at the door and say, look, um, that's not the conversation we want to have. We actually can have this conversation because we have data to back us up. So let's... Uh, Let's take a very quick look. It is 11.41. Let's take a very quick look at the head-to-head -head report. So again, I have, um, I have these now for Sakai versus Canvas and Sakai versus Moodle. We can get three more. So uh, I'm, I'm open to suggestions about what those other three should be. I would think Blackboard would be obvious. I would think D2L would be obvious. The fifth, slightly less so. Uh, but I'd be, I'd be interested to hear your, your thoughts on this. So this is, this is at a much higher level. And uh, there's, it, it's a nicely abstracted level of detail. So here's the overview, uh, how, how Sakai scores against Canvas, and a couple of high-level measures. So emotional footprint, continually improving, usability and intuitiveness, breadth of features, business value created. And as we look, these are, these are real gaps, 80 to 73, 86 to 73, 86 to 75. You know, this, this in some ways is a really nice one pager to put before people at your institution to make a certain kind of argument. Here's the vendor capability summary. Uh, you'll notice that uh, Canvas wins on ease of implementation. We saw that in the other report. Again, same data. There's a product features summary. And again, we see that, uh, you know, there is a minimal difference between the two on analytics and reporting, you know, maybe that is a practically significant difference. Maybe it's not. Um, I think your, your mileage may vary and your interpretations may vary, but I continue to think that this is an opportunity for us to, to, make, to make an impact. You know, the, the field is still clear for us to, to run around on. So there, there's an emotional footprint summary. You can see, uh, you can see where, how we stack up against Canvas. Um, I do think that, you know, this is an interesting one, unique features. So Canvas scores 87, we score 82. Um, I would chalk that up to things like uh, speed grader and analytics dashboards. Uh, I mean, again, I, this is my interpretation, this is my speculation, but uh, the data indicate that possibly we have a, you know, we ought to be thinking about staking out our own position of feature leadership. Where are our own features that no one else has? You know, as we think about the work that we're doing on the roadmap over the next couple of years. And I, you know, I remember Dr. Chuck in, in uh, January talking about how LTI 1.3 would begin to erode that advantage over time. Do you still feel that way? Yes, yeah. the, the App Store and Moodle's plug-in ecosystem. Canvas has an App Store that's actively promoted, whereas Sakai does not. Yeah, I would say, I would say we could have an App Store if we had a little better Sudi server by default and we pre, and we pre integrated it into the trunk and it was always there. Right? But if we've been there, there's just this button called random crap. <laughs> Fact that you're 
So I mean, the good, the good news on that front is that uh, App Store is, uh, is one of our goals for year two of the roadmap. So looking toward 2021, uh, you know, the developments leading up to Sakai for 2021 uh, prioritizes App Store among several other things. So you know, probably now is the time to begin thinking about the approach so that we can execute the approach uh, you know, a, a year from now or six or eight months from now. I mean, I think I think that happens with the with, with a lot of our work. So it is uh, it's 11:47. We are we are slightly past time, and I want to thank you for spending this 45 minutes with me. Um, I want to pose a question, uh, which you guys can think about, and if any of you have views, please grab me this afternoon at the community meeting. So I want to I want to post these reports uh, so that you guys can download them because we have. Uh, we have purchased the license to distribute them and to publish them. So they can, pieces of them can go on the SakaiLMS.org website. Certainly you should have them in your hands. The marketing team is thinking about how best to get this data out there to external audiences. And it, it probably is not in the form of put a you know, 25 page report on the website. It might be, you know, that might be, a, a, that might, we might focus on lead generation. But, we might, but the, we're, we're trying to think about how best to do that. On the other hand, I think putting this in your hands makes a lot of sense. So in some ways, where to put it, you know, it could very, these reports could very easily be downloadable from Confluence, a, a marketing space in Confluence, which had uh, a style guide and uh, logo files and, uh, and market data might actually be a decent thing. The one thing, you know, so I, I, would, I would be interested to hear your thoughts on whether that would be valuable in that way or maybe more valuable in a different way. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on how to contextualize these. So you just sat here for 45 minutes and I gave you my thoughts on how this stuff stacks up and what I think about where there are differences and where there aren't. Um, what is the best way to contextualize this for people who just jump in and download it? Is, is the context needed? Is it not? If it is, how much and how to do that? I don't, I don't pretend to have the answers and I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. So, with that said, it's 11.49, let's break. Um, thank you guys for, for the time, and I'm, I'm always glad to, uh, to take questions and have conversations about this. Oh, I want to ask one other question, too. I was thinking maybe a, a Slack channel that focuses on data might be kind of fun in the, in the Aperio Slack space. So I, uh, I may go out on a limb and create one, and those of you who want to play should jump in and play, and then we can, we can continue these conversations there. So thank you all.